Wayside. Ike fell way further yeah. than Wayside. Yeah, yeah. Ike was uh, patient zero in terms of uh, falling out the meta. Yeah, like Ink stumbled, but Ike ate it. Like he just, <laughs> yeah. Ike beefed it on the tier list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of beef, these two got it as this match is going to get right underway. Both players here in winter semis trying to make that top 42 into, I mean, top 48 into day two. Uh, got a couple sets ahead of them. So taking it one set at a time here. Let's get it, Cy. All right. So as, of course, you normally see with Ike, and uh, I just forgot, Doug, we have Cy guy from Ohio. So mm -hmm. all right. uh, yeah, I'm yeah. remembering all my Ike info now. Yeah, obviously, Ike's bread and butter is going to be that falling neutral air. It's very yes. hard to contest. Inkling's aerials are good, but they are smaller than that. You can maybe contest with back air, maybe like plank, but the air to exchange is generally going to be going in Tom Foolery's favor. So I think Baharito is going to be going to have to not try to contest the neutral air, but find grounded punishes as a result of the neutral air. But right there, uh, Tom Foolery cleaning that first stock up with the uh, forward tilt, and Baharito taking a moment on the platform to just reset and try to form a, formulate a game plan. Yeah, and it. it Trying to get those grounded wins is going to be big, but it's also a game of if you can get there first, you know, because mm -hmm. Inkling has a lot of these super fast aerials they can just throw out. You can see these back airs are starting to connect, and Pajarito, after that mental reset, is just starting to move a little bit faster, and now things are starting to flow. All right, not getting the, the booyah yeah, right not there. Quite. Uh, but has really got himself back in this game pretty quickly. Um, if he can find, like, a roller here or something of that nature, he can get back in there. But Tom Foolery is starting to rack up that damage. She's starting to get that Tom Foolery uh, magic going. <laughs> and uh, Pyarito just going to have to pick a shot a little more carefully. But he finds the Booyah after all, gets a stock, and now we're kind of back in the board. Back yes. in the board. And this is actually not a bad spot for Pyarito to be in. It's a nice, good grab, and the percents are already even just like that. A little bit of juggling there. Tom Foolery kind of put on notice here as he has to find the Nair or the combo starter. Uh, hope Pyarito falls into the loving hands of the... Uh, big bulky sword that Ike wields. Yeah, I think he just decided I'm just going to disengage. Mm -hmm. He actually started putting Splat Bomb in really smart positions, throwing it up on the platform, kind of throwing it at short hop height, so Tom Foolery is interacting with that and not him. But either way, Tom Foolery very good at adapting. He's like, all right, you're figuring out neutral air. Let's just start spacing you on the ground. Let's find these down tilts. Let's find these uh, anti-air up tilts. So he's definitely got like a diverse game plan in his pocket. Yeah, it's crazy because there's a reason that Ike was, you know, so revered at the beginning of the game because this character has good buttons. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just that there is a lot of counterplay to them. And we'll see if Pajarito gets that done. And Ooh. the Booyah going to put us in a 2-1 stock score here. It's one of those things where, like, you have to kind of reference the charge to know the percentages for that. Like, the Inkling player is definitely going to know it better than you. Sure. But it definitely looks like Pajarito has just found those. And I'm not sure if there's, like, Maybe a certain way to DI where it's at least a little less guaranteed, but it's definitely getting a lot of mileage out of Power Retail's game. Yeah, and Sai, I know that there's just like a lot of characters that just kind of have to hold it. Like, I know Snake is infamous for oh, having such God. a large I, percentage of where he could get hit by the Booyah, and there's just nothing you can do. I hate that. that <laughs> I, yeah. hate, I don't even play it. I don't know how AK does it. In the region with Colorado 8, and, man. Yeah, I think I saw him beat a Japanese Inkling. I'm like, this man is battle tested. <laughs> that matchup is fun. <laughs> Ooh. All right, and there goes the Ike dash attack. Uh, we have a saying back home, there's three things guaranteed in life. Life, death, taxes, and Ike dash attack. All right. Now, you uh, have all I, that You could have hit eruption. <laughs> the eruption. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's all right. You know, we're a little bit too early into the day to be doing too much tomfoolery. Oh, speaking of tomfoolery, oh. <laughs> uh, Pyarito missing the punish, getting the berry. Uh, tomfoolery going to have one more opportunity here. Um, yeah, this is definitely looking like his game. I love him using Splatter Shot to like interfere with him in the air. That's a oh. very good idea. That is just barely not going to kill him. Actually, shots. Oh, and the, we got the wonky Splat Bomb hit that sends you back, back to the stage. Mm -hmm. Man. All right, soft forward air. Not going to lead into too much here, but Tom Foolery just one hit away uh, from losing this first game of the set. Of course, he does have a ton of rage, and Ike is a very powerful character, so uh, Pyarito can't fully relax, but he definitely just needs to find one little opening to uh, get himself on the board here. Yeah, there's a good handful of jank that Tom Foolery could pull out of his pocket if he wants to try to get this game uh, and steal it away from Pajarito here. But, you know, Pajarito just needs Ooh. to find one good connection here. Unfortunately, that back is not it. Yeah, okay, couldn't find the punish on the side B, but does catch him jumping. Mm -hmm. So, at the beginning of this, I was concerned about how England was going to control the airspace, but Pyarito definitely figured it out quickly. He's like, if I throw a Splat Bomb here, yep. if I throw a Splatter Shot here, there's oh, a lot yeah. of options where Ike just kind of has to like hold it. 
And um, not only is he losing that airspace from neutral air, he's also getting ink added. So like the pressure like ramps up even further for him to be able to find some uh, some semblance of advantage here. Yeah, and so I, I just think Ike is one of those characters that has to hold it. Those Booyahs are looking airtight here from Pajarito, but the shield break, yeah, speaking of airtight, losing the Skittle there. <laughs> Give me some sauce, man. All right, anyway, going into game two, um, we got to see how Tom Fugger kind of adapts. Pajarito playing really slippery on the ground, mm -hmm. just being really hard for uh, Tom Fugger to track down, and definitely in a really strong position at the start of this game, too. Yeah, and I'm going to start off with some great strings here. Pajarito finds the roller here. Okay. The double? Aww. I thought we were going to see the double. Um, one thing Inkling loves to do, they love to condition you in those tech track scenarios. There's so many ways where you just end up kind of just laying prone on the ground. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's like the 50-50, will he go for roller, will he go for jab lock, but Pyrito already shown us some signs of uh, conditioning against Tom Foolery, so as the set goes on further, I wouldn't be surprised if we started to see that Barry come through and take a stock, but also the Booyahs are really coming into focus here. Yes, indeed. It's just looking really tough. Tom Foolery is going to have to... Yeah, he's starting to try to play a lot more out of shield because he's like, if I get grabbed, I lose my stocks. Mm -hmm. But if you're playing out of shield, that gives you prime real estate to get hit by roller, to get hit by up airs. And yeah, you see just everything starting to connect for Paha Rito. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Okay. All right. <laughs> Falling neutral air leads into the up air. I don't think it was necessarily true, but the hesitation for Paha Rito gave Tom Fuller the opening that he needed. He's still down by a lot of percent here. Um, so I'm not necessarily sure how well Ike does as far as like being a comeback character. I don't really think that's his bag, but hopefully Tom can figure something out. Oh, but yikes. the Booyah, once again, just easy rinse and repeat for Pajarito. Man, and this game just started at such a high tempo that I think Tom Foolery really did not want to play at here. Because Pajarito is obviously going to benefit as Inkman, one of those Ooh. really slippery characters. Yeah, ton of damage. The ink damage modifier, of course, making it even worse. This is looking kind of science sealed and delivered. Pyrito's not getting hit by any aerials. Tom Pooler's getting pieced up on the grounded exchanges. This is looking kind of over, unfortunately, for our good friend Tom Pooler. Yeah, it is not looking great. And okay, obviously Pyrito knows his booyah percents because he's like, and now it's the time. And there it is. Yeah, it, it, game one was definitely really close, but as that extended further, you kind of just saw it kind of become like a, a solved game. Yeah. And it, it sucks to be on the receiving end of that. Like, because you know when your opponent's in that mode, they're like, all right, I'm getting the reads. I know what to do. And you have to like kind of just try to make as many changes as you can on the fly. But yeah, Pyrito learned a lot in game one and just really executed a very simple game plan for all of game two. Yeah, I mean, and Inkling's actually really good character at kind of doing that, at finding like a weakness of a character and be like, oh, I can exploit that to the umpteenth degree yes. and just continues to do that over and over and over and over again over and over again booyah number three or four i think we just saw right there yeah and here's the final booyah yeah but speaking of over and over again it kind of reminds me um of like so fun fact about splatoon 3 they just released the side order dlc where they have like this um uh roguelike mode oh uh, yeah so okay. where you kind of go and do uh roguelike runs over and over and again. So it just kind of brought it up. Just a fun little Splatoon fact oh. to start your day. 